Okay, there, the glue has been applied. It's a non-penetrating glue. You don't want to use a glue that's going to soak and keep soaking through the cloth. And I've decided, uh, this is my first time to do any of this, so I've decided to align the seam there at the oil hole, since I'll need to open that hole anyway, probably. Let me just pull it through, like so. You can see the collet of glue there. I'll be cutting that off or wiping that off. It doesn't take a lot of glue to hold the cloth firmly in the hole. If the cloth should ever be damaged and have to be repaired, it can be, it can be replaced despite what the cat says. Duty calls. Gotta love cats. Okay. To ensure the cloth is pressed firmly against the hole. It is. Anyway, I'll, I'll start the fitting process by forcing the, the pen through as far as I can. There. Now, just for right now, let's just cut off this extra tag of cloth. This is the most expensive woolen cloth in the world. I might as well not waste it. It costs hundreds and hundreds of dollars per yard. I'm going to go, because this is a moisture curing glue that I use, I'm going to go put this in a, in a cup of water, hot water. And that, that will cure the glue completely in less than a half an hour. Okay, we'll be back then. and We'll do the trimming and we'll do the fitting. Okay, it's been sitting in the water for a while. Water does a couple of things. Cloth is hygroscopic, so the water not only cured my glue conveniently, it also made the cloth swell up, so now the screw will be quite a tight fit. At this point, I will take the, the, uh, the pen or the screw out of the hole and consider trimming the cloth. You may have noticed in one of the earlier pictures that there were two little metal washers, spacer washers, being used to keep the, the rod in alignment. Well, I doubt that I'm going to use those. I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll be cutting the cloth off flush on the one side, but on the other side I'm going to leave it protruding. Oh, somewhat. And I can adjust that with a razor blade further in the future if I need to. That's my plan. So, there's that. It might be easier to cut cloth while it's wet. Now let me think for a second which side of this I have to cut. That's the uh, upside, and that's the outboard side, so I'm going to cut this side off flush. My razor blades are not very sharp. It does cut easier when it's wet. So there, we got a nice clean cut there, good. And on this side, there's a little bit of a glue collar that can remain. Uh, not going to be in the way, and I'm going to just guesstimate two washer thicknesses. And the cloth can be trimmed further later, so maybe I'll just leave this on the long side. Not easy to cut the cloth when it's unsupported. I really should put something through it. And here I'm going to cut into the end of my thumb. Now you know why my hands look so nasty. Okay, that's almost surely longer than I need, but you see the cloth is very forgiving. It can crush down. The next step is to uh, dry this out. I'm going to put the pen back through if I can. Sometimes it catches on, you got a shoulder screw here, it's going to catch on the cloth and be hard to push through, but there it is. Now, next step is to dry the water out. Once the water is gone, the cloth will, which has been compressed a bit, will stay relaxed and the screw may be a perfect fit. If not, there are further means to ease the fit without doing any filing or broaching or reaming. We'll go into that later. Because this is just an example of a technique that you can use on almost anything. Any type of a toy machine bearing so long as you have enough meat to be able to open up the hole as I did.